Thank you so much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This has your attention. It has mine as well. So thank you for sharing this channel. I stay with you after the hurricane season, uh, watching uh, this uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, and especially with our El Nino pattern, we're going to see some bigger fronts, potential with severe weather this winter. So thank you for sharing this channel. I'm on top of this for you with a 5.1 in magnitude in Barbados. A lot of us felt it yesterday. It doesn't necessarily mean there will be another one. Uh, maybe this is kind of the, the bigger one in this, this this series of some of the uh, uh, shakes that have been going on, but it's something I'm watching for you. And then right after this one we had in Barbados, we jumped over here not too long after Jamaica 3.8, which wasn't as big as the other one we had in Jamaica not too long ago. Didn't cause any uh, damage, but a lot of us felt this as well, especially in our eastern end of Jamaica where we had some of the shaking yesterday. Again, doesn't necessarily mean uh, there's going to be a bigger one. Sometimes these are good because there's a lot of friction, stress, kind of a buildup of tension, uh, below. So if things kind of shift a little bit, it could actually relieve some of that and uh, prevent maybe a bigger shake. So some of these smaller shakes sometimes are a good thing. Puerto Rico, British, and U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, very common to see them happening all the time. But again, sometimes the smaller shakes help out as a whole. 3.8 in magnitude just in the north of the British and uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. We get a ton of shaking in here uh, all the time. Magnitude 3 to about 4.5. But again, it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a bigger quake, but I'm watching it. We've had a little tick up in some of the uh, activity, of course, yesterday. So monitoring closely. Now, a lot of these were shallow, even though they weren't big in magnitude. And because they were shallow, we are able to uh, feel it. Uh, again, it wasn't super deep. Again, a lot of these were uh, roughly around uh, anywhere from 20 to about 50 uh, kilometers yesterday. And that's why a lot of us felt a lot of the seismic activity yesterday. Of course, the shallower ones tend to do more damage if they're bigger because, again, closer to the surface. So that makes uh, sense. So I'm watching it for you. I'm on top of it for you, watching it nonstop throughout the day. Now, here's one of the affronts. I mentioned yesterday, we're waiting on some of the bigger fronts to move through parts of the uh, Caribbean. One front kind of cranking by Florida and uh, the Bahamas. A little bit of a cool down for uh, some of us uh, watching that, but this front's not really going to dive down. But by mid-December, that's when we'll see some bigger fronts moving in. And in December, while we're about to get out of the hurricane season, sometimes there's a spin-up out here in subtropical nature, not truly tropical in nature. We had one in January earlier this year. Uh, there was a classified system. So sometimes we get something out there uh, developing. Now, as we take a look at the end of the hurricane season, August, September, and October, those are active months. Almost all of the names, not almost all of them, but 84% of the name systems happen in those three months. November is typically a little bit quieter as it really cuts off. And then it really shuts off, of course, uh, in December. We're outside of the hurricane season. Now, the list, though, goes through December. So if something tries to spin up in the, say, Central Atlantic, it would still take the name Vince. The next list, the next hurricane season list does start at the uh, new year. So again, we're about to get into another list, but if something does spin up, Vince would be the name. Now today, watching the rain, extra rain around Belize, Honduras, we've seen that. A couple showers possible, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, just with that tail end of the front, and a lot of us dealing with some of the extra clouds, but Belize, Honduras, uh, as you get toward Providencia, San Andres, watching out for some of the extra rain. Then as this front just kind of weakens and falls apart, it will pull in some extra moisture. Not a lot, but as we work our way from Thursday to Friday, Friday, we'll start to get some of these spotty showers that will be popping up even across the eastern and northeastern Caribbean. You see that uh, rain chance bumping up a notch, a few showers possible, St. Lucia, Dominica, Martinique, Seva may catch some over toward our Barbados. So seeing a few more showers by the end of the week. So Trinidad and Tobago kind of bumping around our rain chance 30 to 40% over the next three days, upwards in Grenada to about a 40 to 50% chance by Friday. So slightly higher as we get toward the end of the week. Same thing, St. Vincent and the Grenadines will get up to about a 40% chance. St. Lucia rain chance, 40 to 50% uh, tomorrow and Friday. Again, not washouts, but we'll see some of those spotty showers around. Working our way through Barbados, Rain chance about 50% for tomorrow, for our Thursday. 40% chance the next couple days as we work our way into Martinique. As we get back toward Dominica, rain chance about 40% as well. Very limited chance of rain uh, today in Guadeloupe, up to a 30% chance for tomorrow. Just a 20% chance today and tomorrow in Tigum, Barbuda. But some passing showers. End of the week, St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, same thing, up to a 30% chance on Friday. Anguilla and St. Bart's, rain chance running at about 20% the next couple days. A little bit 
higher on Friday, St. Martin, Seba, and Stacia. Rain chance bumps up as well in Puerto Rico by the end of the week, but not much. U.S. and British Virgin Islands watching out for a passing shower as we work our way back toward the Dominican Republic. 20 to 30 percent chance isolated. Haiti, we're mainly going to be on the dry side over the next few days. 30 percent chance the next couple days in Jamaica. 30 percent chance the next couple days in the Cayman Islands. I mentioned that old front and some of those extra clouds around. 60 percent chance in Belize. Keep me posting in the comments in Belize if you get some rain or if you don't. Kind of active through the Yucatan as well with a 50% chance. Not much through the Bahamas. Some of the extra clouds around. 20% chance as we work our way into Cuba. 10% chance as we work our way to the uh, Turks and Caicos. 20% chance for tomorrow. And the rain chance staying pretty minimal as we get back toward Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. There's just not a lot. Not a lot of systems around. Uh, Bermuda uh, mainly on the dry side over the next three days. Rain chance about 60% in Costa Rica today. 50% chance for tomorrow. Isolated in northern Venezuela, 30% chance, 20 to 30% chance in Guyana. And as we work our way into Suriname, mainly dry, little passing shower will be uh, possible. So monitoring these earthquakes, keep an eye on Central America for the possibility of some flooding. Bigger fronts to the north, I'll be tracking that as those get set to move in. Keep an eye on any subtropical storm development in December out into the Atlantic. But again, thank you for sharing this channel. I'll be on top of the earthquake situation for you. Have a good rest of your day.